All right, it's Tariq Rico, the bear, back for another The Bear Facts podcast. The Bear Truth segment. Now, I see, you see my crusty toes in there. Do not criticize my crusty toenails. Um, it is, it's not hereditary. It's more friction. No, it's like toe alopecia. That's what I was told by my uh, ex-girlfriend's nails tech. <laughs> But anyway, uh, I know about the alopecias from my daughter. She had the fresh general alopecia as a kid. Like, I used to keep her in my armpit. I used to keep her in my armpit. So, it took a while before uh, her soft spot hair uh, grew in. But anyway, um, you know, I'm sitting here with some of my books now. A lot of these are my master's program books. I got my undergrad upstairs i did my undergrad in psychology um but you know reflecting reflecting like you know i I came across my uh this is my jail this was like right before i came home from jail my jail resume i had to frame it because you know like at this point this was this was like 2015 but even these like my reese's pieces boutique that was my mom's uh clothing boutique it's no longer open but she had her own business but i put maintenance and security i was never there i was lying my ass off (laughs) but throughout the years that's what i usually did to show some type of job history but then the pizza shops i i I did the pizza shop work uh those two those were the spans of me working at those pizza shops and then i was a peer support specialist upstate and like i said uh, i guess when i came home I was still finishing up my, or this, because I made this in Waymart. I made this in the uh, prison I was in. Uh, so I was still had credits to finish. Uh, I had gotten a peer support certification, but I was studying psychology. So online program. Uh, every time I seen the unit manager and the forensic counselor, like in the hallways, they would always be like, oh, like I seen uh, the forensic counselor more than I seen the uh, unit manager. But whenever I seen them, they would be like, yo, you doing good things. I hear you doing great things with the uh, inmates with the severe mental, uh, mental illness. Now, when I first started on those blocks, it was told to me like nobody like this is the most severe unit they had three other units beside the unit I was on and they was telling me like this is the most severe and this is basically the point of no return once you're here you basically live out your days here now the uh, the thing that I would attest to for myself was like I had gotten two people back to their home jail and then three other people back to population within the jail I was in so if that's the point of no return, I would think, and that was like I said, the start of my career. Like I had this book work, but you know, now I also got an article re- written. It was a local paper. I'm in the Philadelphia area. This is more local to my uh, borough outside of uh, Philadelphia. Um, it was something uh, I have the nonprofit. I got my nonprofit drawn down here. This is. I made this. I made the whole thing with the graphics and the graphic design. I designed my uh, logo and uh, I put everything in there. I did that. I'm offering those services. So, like, comment, subscribe. Hit me up on Instagram, The Bear Canvas Tattoo Studio. I got my tattoo studio books as a business. I read all three of them. These are supposed to be recommended as the top Johns. I read some other business books in jail. You get what I'm saying? I got my foreclosure book. Uh, I got my building ponds book. You've seen the pond I put outside. I got to update that stuff uh, because I can't find the John when it was nice and beautiful. But this is another one. This is the one I like, but this one has more like literature in it. This one is pretty pictures. <laughs> I'm joking. This is the business of therapy. Like this is a, like I bought this and I bought this. This is best practices. This is supposed to be like the top joints on starting your private practice business. Uh, like I said, I got my article, but you know I was looking at it because it all started like for this part portion of my life. Like uh, I was basically this was this picture was taken before I came right before I came home. Like. I was probably bigger than I am now. I was definitely bigger than I am now when I went upstate. This is me at 230. 
But uh, this was taken right before I came home. And that's all that. It was December uh, 23rd, 2014. Uh, but, you know, this now is my actual resume. Like, it's like a booklet. And it's like, you hear that crisp booklet sound. Like, don't ever know where those uh, paper came from or what it says. I didn't look at it. Uh, but this is my resume. The one, the paper clip clips is the resume. This is my cover letter. Again, all professional and stuff. Like, since leaving prison, like, it ain't pizza shops. It's, uh, these places that you see is filled in. Like, some people suggested different things, and then once I changed it, other people tell me to change it back, but, yeah, I mean, so, these are all different organizations. Some are uh, part-time, like this was a contract part-time. That was uh, after I would get off my full-time job. Some of them were internships. Uh, and, like, you know, other experiences. This was the organization I set up. Uh, so, you know, and then this is the, me doing the peer support in there. So, you know, it's been a journey. And the good thing is most of that uh, experience came from one uh, organization over these years. And... The last three years, as you can see, has been rough, but, you know, and then, like, you know, I got my transcripts in there, and I got my transcripts from the master's program, and I got, like, shh. like, as somebody coming home, like, this is my uh, national provider identifier, identifier that um, MPI, uh, this is my mandatory reporting journal, I probably got to update that by now. Um, and then, like I said, I got, this is the M, the medical doctor's, uh, reference letter that I worked with the longest. I got the team lead that became the director of community projects, uh, reference letter. I got the interim team lead before they closed the program. I'm joking, but it's like, she was the team lead when they closed the program. I got the psychiatric nurse. Uh, I got a substance abuse counselor that I worked with that eventually became a psychiatric, uh, social worker. I got, uh, uh, I got the master's clinician. Um, that's what I'm going to say about that. I got my, uh, again, like even with the, uh, parole officer, like every time I got a new parole officer, which was every couple months, cause I don't know, I got some conspiracy theories about that but nothing against them but like i mean all of them that i worked with was like oh you're such a model uh parolee you're, you're a great parolee i'm like can you put that in writing that'll be great <laughs> and my thinking behind that was like yeah i mean like for me it was weird because it's like i don't feel like i'm doing nothing out of normal and the first parole officer i had said like nigga most people don't even come home and get a job let them all stay out of trouble like <laughs> you're a breeze to work with i'm like well, I, I, I've been priding myself for the last 20 years on staying out of trouble. Thank you. <laughs> so this was the same thing. This was uh, when I asked the guy, Mike Murphy, that was the unit uh, unit manager for the uh, joint. He uh, got the superintendent to write me a joint. Now, like I said, the whole premise for me behind getting all them was like as somebody who has not just a felony, but been upstate, like, yeah, you know I mean, not just in county or not just a felony. And yeah, you know I mean, I've been upstate. It's like, yeah, you know I mean, the word of, like I said, the MDs, the unit managers in the prison, the, uh, the parole officers, like, yeah, you know I mean, if they say something like I joke, but when I use the, uh, little Wayne line, uh, went from poor me to police pour me a drink to celebrate me like that. For me, that's a good feeling. I don't care how what anybody else say because some people can hate and be mad. And like, you know what I mean? But it's like, I ain't got to worry about them. They saying good things about me. I ain't got to worry about them. <laughs> this is my SAMHSA. Uh, or no, this is my ASAM. This is my ASAM. This is uh, for level of care. Like, I can determine and evaluate people for level of care, like inpatient, outpatient, um, partial hospitalization, stuff like that. 
This is the peer support specialist uh, certificate I got while incarcerated. But, you know, I started my career with that in the prison. But then when I came home, I got my bachelor's degree, but still started in the street career as a peer. Um, this is my certified drug and alcohol counselor certificate. It lapsed, but, you know, um, I, I might just get... And this is from the state of Delaware. That's, like, not too far from here. But uh, that's where I was working, so that's where I got it. I should have got it, like, yeah, I mean, global. This was a John International, whatever. This was a John that I got when I came home. This was 2017. Uh, the borough I live in, they gave, they acknowledged me as black excellence. It was an appreciation. I, was, I, I appreciate it. I'm joking. I'm joking. I did appreciate it. This is my bachelor's degree. You see that cum laude in there? I didn't see it at first. I didn't see it, but that's my bachelor's degree. And I I, I didn't see it at first. I didn't see it at first. The designation, it took like a year. But what, is, what is that? Is that cool? <laughs> this is my master's degree. I got a higher GP on, GPA. Now, the funny thing is, no, it's not magna cum laude, sigma cum laude, whatever. But, you know. I was still with honors, not distinguished honors, not highest. <laughs> but, you know, people had no honors. So, like, I mean, to go from poor me to police, poor me to drink to celebrate me. Uh, But then, like I said, like, this was one of the internships I was at. I like this internship. I didn't last there that long. I, I ended up getting uh dismissed. <laughs> But God had blessed me, and I ended up doing my final internship on campus, which I really enjoyed. Especially as an online student, I enjoyed being on campus, even though I was on campus doing stuff, different things throughout my time. Uh, this was a drawing in Philadelphia I worked at. I was a therapist there. I'm not going to go into any more than that. This was the methadone clinic, uh, the net. Uh, I was a counselor, therapist, whatever you want to say, behavioral health and social services. I, I really like that. That was in Philly. Um, this is my Widener John. You see, you see the the weight loss difference. My Widener John. Uh, this was the last John. This was Project Transition. This was last year, almost a year ago now, and I still ain't found a new job. But you know, there's a reason why I'm doing all this because you know, I mean, I, I got experience. This was uh, out here. This is Eagleville Hospital. I was a con I was a contractor through a, a temp service, but uh, I really like this. I just they ended the assignment. I really like Eagleville. Don't I don't remember why. I just got a feel for it. I feel like quick, and then I liked it. Um, but they ended the assignment. This was something that was related to my big bear hug, the donation card, and stuff like that. So a donation coordinated by uh this was FHR this was fellowship I worked here the longest this was what is this this is the associate clinician badge this is the substance abuse specialist badge this is the peer badge and then I got a vocational specialist badge somewhere but I don't know where the hell that was I got more junk. I, for somebody who worked at one spot for so long, I got a lot of junk. This was RHD. This was through the temp agency. Uh, I was there for like two weeks. I got uh, I got sciatica and sideline. And I was told they wasn't going to let me go, but I don't know. Somebody got in touch with me. They're like, yeah, you got to roll. Uh, but like I said, with all that, like I'm saying, you see, I'm trying to still develop. This is the podcast. You see the stuff over here. I'm still trying to develop different things as far as entrepreneurially. But and I got my, uh, I got my um, DSM. I got my business law. This is from my undergrad. I was trying to go for a double major before I got uh, nabbed up. I got my Merck manual. Somebody gave it, but somebody let me hold theirs while I was locked up, and I was doing some research for some programming for the nonprofit I wanted to uh, put together. I wrote out some notes. I didn't bring that down here from my office. Um, but that's where I really got to the because uh, I was going to go through the whole thing as a psychology major and become a 
clinical psychologist, PhD, but it was like, I read the Merck manual and it's like, yeah, you don't got to do that. You could just get one of the master's degree, Jones, and do what you do. And I was like, you bet. And that one specifically said uh, psychiatric social worker. It didn't say nothing about licensed uh, professional counselors or stuff like that. And I know there's other things like mental health, uh, mental health worker or something like that. And then there's, uh, there's other letters that you do therapy like, so... But I just wanted to do therapy, but uh, that was that. But there's more. Like I said, where, is, where do I put that? Oh, this is like, you know I mean, this goes with the garden ponds and other things. I got the landscaping drones. I got the door knockers or door hangers a while ago. Because, like, I know in PA, you're not supposed to put stuff like solicitations and, like, menus and stuff like that in people's mailbox. So a lot of time you'll put it in the door, but it'll blow away. So I got the door hangers now. I wanted to get the reinforcement so I could have this hanging on the door and then maybe staple the menu, not the menu, but the little brochure. I made this brochure, but like I was in a rush when I did this. I don't think I uh, made a lot of these, so like I wouldn't even like the, but you know what I mean? I was working obviously when I did this, so it was like $15 to print up the amount of them I got, something like that. Like I said, I designed it myself, so I saved money on that. I got I got my um my drawing from the attorney general. Yeah, it just expired. So I went through uh four twenty. I I was gonna update it, but like yeah, I mean I figured like this this never this this is my entity number, I ain't gonna let you see too much of that. This is the uh insurance, I'm not gonna let you see too much of that. Uh, but I, I still, I got to update that, but, um, I feel like right now with all the cyber crimes, it's like, you know what I mean? I got to get a handle on that. Now I got some renderings in here. I thought maybe they in a different, they got to be in a different, fo no, I, this is my, um, my upstate carpentry, John, the NCCER, John, this is my OSHA 30. OSHA 30, not OSHA 10, nigga. OSHA 30. I got a price list. I, I went around a couple times and I was advertising. I showed people the price list. I gave people some brochures. I put some door hangers out there. I get, I got some business cards, too. I still got business cards. I got to uh, do the brochure, more brochures. But like I said, we're going to have to aim for, I guess, next year. Like I got some of the prices for some of the materials on here. So, you know, like, you know what I mean? What's going in on them? What's... Uh, you use different stuff for, like, this is, like, the filter. This is, like, the skimmer and then the, um, the filter, John. I got the pond sizes and average prices. Like, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you can see that. Like, that would be, like, the smallest pond, uh, 8 by 11, the 11 by 16, and the prices and stuff like that. And like this is the drawing I started outside. I'm still not done, but I was like I said, I've been in between the jobs, and it looks to me it looks better because now I got the uh, I removed the bricks and I put the uh, uh, river rocks or whatever you want to call them around it, and I got them from the creek. So and I got the I did all that with like the bare material. Now this I break down the um, landscaping. I think by square feet by acre estimated acre estimated square feet average cost different landscape projects and i got the alert lawn fertilizer the weed whacking weed control yard cleanup flower bed installation mulching landstone or landscaping stones and like I, just, I did my research i got my square feet and equals acres and stuff like that and uh, an acre equals whatever but I was, I was, I was getting him in. I was getting him in. I got my um, average car of hardscape. This is different hardscape things: stone fire pit, walkways, playgrounds, fencing, arbors, pergolas, patios, retention wall, retaining wall, whatever you want to call it. Decks, gazebos, porch. I put mini golf because I know how to do that. Putting green, outdoor kitchen. I meant to put the outdoor kitchen on there from the rip. Now I got uh. Renderings, I can give you a rendering. This is like, yeah, I mean, but I could do this. 
I have renderings. You can go on. Like, when I talk about going on my Instagram and check out the services and stuff like that, even on YouTube, you can go, when I tell you to go through the playlist and stuff like that, you can see archived. You can see me doing this. You can see me doing it. I got the, uh, I got a bunch of different renderings. This is supposed to be a Rintendra one. This is like a, a garden pond with the waterfall. Then this is like the house. The houses I put in there. I put the retention wall in the, between them. I put the like furniture in here so you can see. Like I'm still working on this on the actual drum, but you get the just I put some um in the back. I put a uh this is supposed to be like a replica of my what I was gonna do, the project I was doing in my backyard for a portfolio build. I was gonna put the retention wall around, I was gonna put a put a patio and then like some lawn chairs and a fire pit. And then I'm gonna add a pergola too. But right now I'm still not working. So like you know what I mean, like with all that, like all the uh this is like a community project I was trying to show people like my vision on like of uh some of the vacant lots and stuff that they're using for community gardens and the land bank and stuff like that you got the uh skate parks and then i put the uh because like i said i know how to do the uh golf holes i don't know if it's in here it should be but it's becoming a pain in the ass to turn the space so this would be the other side but it's on the um and then you got the outdoor kitchens and the mini golf just for like the neighborhood people that uh now, this is a project I did at my folks at Crib. It's on Instagram, too. I got some time matches on different stuff. This was, like, kind of the finished product. I had to leave, so I didn't get to cut off the excess. But since it was my folks' crib, uh, they just took the this, like, yeah, you know I mean? But the bed came out good. The plants were cool for the time being. Um, I'm sure they're still fine now. I check up on my plants. I check up on them, see how they've been, like... Uh, I'm going to flip through because you're going to see, like, I have the clear, like, whole sections of, like, uh, that's all. Like, you see how it's, like, bare dirt right there, but all this was filled with uh, weeds and stuff and grass. All of that was filled with weed. Now all of that's filled with plants and um, mulch. So, you know, like, all this isn't supposed to be there. And even around that plant in the back. But you can see me on um, the social media doing this stuff. But like I said, uh, see that all this, this is where the tulip I line around the tree with. I think they were tulips or some type of little lilies. And then there's other plants and flowers in there. So, you know, I think it was, I had fun doing the project. And, and that's what I'm saying. I don't know if I said that on one of the other segments, but I was saying like, if this isn't fun for you like if this is fun for you if you sit back and look at it like art if you sit back like you did work that's the type of workforce i want like you know what i mean like i want people that take pride in it when it's in full swing when it's like you know i mean whether it's the landscaping the aquascaping or hardscaping like i want people that like enjoy it. like it's a craft you get what i'm saying it's not just a job it's a craft and that's what the bare hands do and all that other stuff Bear essence, bear essentials. I'm not going more into that. <laughs> uh, now, I got the jail books, but I can't remember. Because I don't want to show too much. I got the jail books. And the reason why I'm pulling these out is because, like, a lot of this stuff was already mapped out. <laughs> Even before I went to jail, I had done multiple streams of income uh on the internet multiple streams of internet income i got the book upstairs no i don't think this is the book and i don't remember if i took the book back upstairs because i don't remember see this is all my jail paperwork and shit like that i used to love to do groups i don't know i probably still do i just haven't done any i think this is probably like early fucking uh like i was joking like i felt like i would be writing raps and Shove a baby of gas and kick it. So I started writing some poetry. This was harder, believe it or not. Like, like I can write a, I can write a rap in like five minutes. It might not be all that, but it'd be done. <laughs> Shouts out Tupac. But like, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Whatever. So this is, I got the video game idea. I'm not even going to go through it because 
That's copyrighted. That's copyrighted. I have my um the bear big bear hug. This is while I'm in jail. This is before all this is uh prospects for support and stuff like that. I'm not going to I had some jokes. I had the this is a Kindle Fire help assistance joke. Uh, this is the life plan. It's a, like, I mean, I didn't know what I was going to do when I was first, but it was like barbershop school. I was talking to people about bouncing government contracts, work as barber, get the second income to achieve desired income, save money to pay off fines, student loans, uh, down payment on a duplex, keep reinventing, uh, reinvesting money in the duplexes, start a landscaping business, second, secondary mission. Buy hats, gloves, scarves, and blankets for the homeless until we have the means to start a charity. Also speak different congregations to get the nation's clothes, shoes, and money. Uh, try selling t-shirts at the barbershop with uh, work with Art Institute students to develop a video game, a couple screenplays, a clothing design, uh, apps, and man cave show. The students at the uh, ministry school to help us on... Um, I think I explained that. that the ministry school is on City Line, and like from what I was told, it was like one of them big ministry schools that send priests all over the school, uh, all over the world, not just like, you know what I mean, like, you know what I mean, whatever. So I was figuring, like, if I network with them, then they go all over, and <laughs> and I bring my, I mean, then I'm global. No, I'm joking. Uh, school to help develop relationships, the charity grows buy an ice cream truck, uh, sports bar, finish my degree, see, we gotta, see, we gotta, I don't wanna, ah, we'll have to be back.